This video is about scams. Lately I've been seeing more and more and more scams on different groups and forums and bulletin boards and pretty much everywhere else where people post jobs for freelance translators or for translators in general. And uh, it just seems to be a growing trend. This can only mean that people are actually falling for them because otherwise they wouldn't keep posting them. And since we're seeing so many translation scams, I thought I should just cover these a bit and talk about them, maybe about how to spot them, but mainly how to avoid them, make sure you don't get scammed. Let's get into it. So this is the definitive guide for not getting scammed with freelance translation jobs. So right away, most of these scams, when you hear from them, the first thing they'll do is they'll say, I need whatever translation. It'll be usually very vague, sometimes a bit more detailed, but very often it'll be something like, we need translations in all languages, DM us. When you DM them, it'll usually either be a Telegram account or they'll want you to DM them on Facebook where obviously they have a face fake account or something like that. So the first thing I recommend doing all the time, whether they contact you via Facebook group, via email, via whatever it might be, is to ask them for their company info. If they're saying, we need you to do this, that means that there's an organization behind them, whether it be a company, whether it be a nonprofit, whether it be a governmental agency, whether it be whatever it might be, there is a group. And if there's a group, that means that they have some presence somewhere. They'll have their domain name, they can email you from that domain name, they'll have a website, they'll have something. So ask them for their company information. That's absolutely the first thing you should do. I've received a request from someone saying they were from Deloitte, but they're emailing me from a Gmail address. And so obviously I said, well, sounds good. Just send me your business address and we can communicate there. And I never heard back from them because obviously other people aren't asking this. And obviously it was fake. They weren't really from Deloitte. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it happens. And these can happen all the time. A very easy way to get through it is to ask them for their company information. There's no reason why they should not give it to you. However, having said that, sometimes people hire you personally. Maybe it's not a company. Maybe someone just needs a translation for their own personal needs. You know, they need some, uh, some of their documents translated. They need some certificate made, something like that. So they don't have a company email address or they don't want to use their company email address for it. That's understandable. So if this is the case, then you should ask them for their personal information. Now, when you ask for their personal information, you can say it's for invoicing purposes, because once you invoice them, of course, you'll need to exchange details in terms of bank account information and stuff like that. You can ask for a social media account, like their LinkedIn account. You can ask for their bank account information up front. Uh, you can ask for, you know, their address or something like that. And you can just say it's like this is standard operating procedure when I'm dealing with a client for the first time. And that way you can figure out who they are and that they're giving you their real name, their real information, that this is a real job. Very often, once you get a mailing address, many times you can either go to some local version of the Yellow Pages or even just Google and try to verify whether that is their address or whether it sounds plausible or correct. Once you've done all this, you should have a good idea as to whether these people are legit or not. But if you still don't know, if you're still not sure after all this, what you can do is you say, look, for first time clients, I'm happy to work for you, but I do ask for an upfront payment of 50% or 10% or anywhere in between. I usually say anywhere between 10 and 50%, depending on what type of job it is. The bigger the job, the smaller the percentage. And this basically just shows good faith for a first time client. And this happens quite often, by the way, I work with translators and very often when, when they're first time translators, they'll ask me for an upfront payment at the beginning, just to show good faith and show that payments between our different accounts in different countries actually works because that's also an issue. If they are contacting you and they think you're serious, they should be fine doing that. And that's basically it. Now, there are a lot of other ways to see whether it's a scam or not, like to see whether they use Telegram. Pretty much 100% of the time they ask you to contact them on Telegram, it's a scam. Or whether they're unclear about what they're asking for, they're not clear about 
the subject matter or about the languages they want and stuff like that. Rather than worry too much about all that, just follow this list of things to do. Ask for their company information, ask for their personal information, get a home address if it is their personal information and or ask for a milestone payment up front. Then you should be set. So just make sure you follow this checklist and everything should be okay. Okay, thanks, bye. Savidum.